What's the word, y'all? The goal of today's video is to maybe change your perspective on some things in the NBA. I'm being honest, this is mostly for the younger viewers um, of the NBA slash fans of this channel. But if you're older, dude, you might you might relate to some of the things I'm talking about in this video. So a few nights ago, the Nets and the Warriors went head to head on national TV in Brooklyn. And it wasn't necessarily a close game. Kevin Durant had one of his worst games of the season. Seth Curry, Draymond Green, and the Cavs went in and they got an easy W. After the game, Draymond Green said some things. Draymond Green and a three-year partnership of Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry. Very disrespectful to not include Klay Thompson in there, I must admit, but we continue. Everybody criticized it. Everybody criticized Kevin. Everybody criticized us. They didn't appreciate it. But people usually don't appreciate greatness until they no longer have it. And there are some things within this quote or within this article, which was uh, published on the Washington Post, that I agree and disagree with. And, and the thing I want I want to try to change y'all mind on the younger viewers is, is the appreciation part of the players that we currently got in the NBA. Let me take a step back. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not love everything that was going on in the NBA when you had the super team Warriors, right? I didn't hate the league. I wasn't, you know, watching less games then than I am now. I was still doing what I was doing. But obviously, with that super team, there wasn't a ton of parity in the NBA. And I'm happy, I'm happy that Kevin Durant ended up in Brooklyn, right? Because now, the league right now seems like it has parity. Yes, the Warriors are killing it. Even today, they had a crazy comeback against the Cavaliers. Um, Brooklyn is still very interesting with their star players. But it feels like the league is open to, to anybody. And we kind of started last year with the Milwaukee Bucks, right? Nobody, well, not nobody, I wouldn't say nobody. Majority of the people did not see the Milwaukee Bucks going out there and winning the championship. Now, again, everything had to fall in perfectly for them, but a championship is a championship. I'm getting that out there first. I'm not saying that I love that Kevin Durant ended up there or love the three years that they were there. Kevin Durant signed with them in the summer of 2016. So if I'm doing my math right, summer of 2016 would have made me... 20 years old when Kevin Durant signed with the Golden State Warriors. And I'm going to admit that that first day when I got that 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 Wolves bomb or maybe it was Shams, that my new chapter, whatever the hell it was, I was I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew the salary cap was about to spike and people had money. But I don't think a lot of people saw Kevin Durant going to the Warriors. I think some, maybe it was Stephen A. Smith went on to TV like a couple days before and was like, I, I know that's that's about that. But somebody on national TV knew that Kevin Durant was going, but nobody believed him. And they ended up being right. But other people, people that watched the game was like, ain't no way, man. He just, first of all, they just won 73 games. So Kevin Durant not going to take that route. And Kevin Durant just recently lost to them in the playoffs. There's no way, right? And it happened. And I was mad, man. I was mad because in that moment, when I saw that tweet, I knew that parody and the NBA was going to be gone as long as he was there. And that was true. The only reason they didn't win that last championship, I'm not taking it away from the Toronto Raptors, but if they were healthy, everybody can agree that they were going to win that series. But even at the age of 20 years old, and I was upset in the moment that Kevin Durant went there. I appreciated the years that they played together. Now, again, I'm not I'm not saying that I love the entire league in that moment, but this is what I mean. We had the greatest shooter of all time. We have maybe the greatest scorer of all time. We had a player that's one of the better defensive players in the last decade, and we had another player that's arguably one of the greatest shooters of all time in Klay Thompson. All of those four historic players on the same team, and I, even though I didn't love that that team existed or loved how they got there, wasn't I, I wasn't hate watching the team. Because I had learned my lesson. Let's take a step back even further. 11 years ago, I, rem I remember where I was. I was in my grandma's house and the TV was on and we were watching. I'm pretty sure it was ESPN. Because this was one of the biggest moments in sports history. We have a player announcing his free agency signing. And we're finding out on a television show about him. You know, back in the day before Woj and Shams, what I used to do to figure out who was signing where or trades that was going on, I would turn on ESPN and just read the bottom or see what they were talking about. But this guy, LeBron James, had a whole TV 30-minute hour little spot on the biggest sports market in the world, and he decided to take his talents to South Beach. Remember, this is 11 years ago. I'm, I'm 24. I'm 25 now. That's crazy. I was I, I was 13 years old. So you got to you gotta think about me as like a 7th, 8th grader, maybe about to go into high school, and I'm loving the game of basketball. And LeBron James just went to the heat. And then we find out that he's teaming up with Wade, and he's teaming up with Chris Bosh. I was devastated. 
Because even at 13 years old, I knew that that was a rap. And I, in my mind, at 13 years old, I hated that Heat's team. I actively, actively rooted against them every single night. If Twitter was a thing back then, y'all know those annoying accounts with no profile picture that just be saying dumb stuff because they hate a certain team, a certain player. I would have been him at the age of, I would have been him if Twitter was around. I hated that decision for LeBron. I hated that decision for the league. And most of it was because I was a Bulls fan. And I knew for sure in the prime of Derrick Rose, Joakim Noah, and Lou Day, we didn't stand a chance against their big three. So for the next however many years LeBron James was with the Miami Heat, I was hate watching them. Which means that I missed out on so much just elite level basketball. I just want to show y'all this so y'all can really understand what I missed out. Now this is not a uh, word is bond, but this is an article, top five individual season in NBA history. Um, number one, um, I, I don't really know, but this, no, I'm sorry, number five was LeBron James in 2013. Right now, I am dreading the day that LeBron James retires from the league. In 2013, while I was still hate watching him, he had his best individual season. And according to this publication, the fifth best individual season in the history of basketball. But since I was hate watching him, slash Wade, slash Bosh, I didn't get to experience the greatness of this season, of those players, because I dislike them so much. So that brings me back to the Warriors. At the age of 20 or however old I said I was, I had learned my lesson because I missed some of the best years of Braun, some of the last of the great years of Wade, and legitimately some of the last years of Chris Bosh because he ended up getting the blood clot slash whatever health issue. I missed that era. I missed it. So when Kevin Arrest signed with the Warriors, yeah, I was fuming, but it didn't last long because I knew that the basketball that we were about to see between those four players and whoever the hell they decide to run at center, it didn't matter at that point, was going to be a great product of just basketball. So yes, I knew that every season it was going to be uh, Warriors <laughs> versus Cavs. I knew it, but I still watched Kevin Durant do his thing. I still watched the elite uh, shooting of Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson, and I still watched the elite defense of Draymond Green and admired it in the moment. Now my message for the younger people out there, don't fall into the trap that was the, tra the the trap that you see with people that still hate the Warriors or still hate Kevin Durant for the decision five years, six years ago. Don't fall into the trap that 13-year-old me did and try to appreciate every single basketball player slash team for what they are. Now, luckily for us right now, again, we have parity. Um... <laughs> thanks to Kyrie Irving, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. If Kyrie Irving was hooping, maybe we won't really have parity. But we have parity in the league currently. And that's an amazing thing. We don't have the super, super, super teams. And the teams that we thought might have been super teams aren't performing that way. But I do know of people in my whole, my real life that hate watch certain players. And we're talking about some of the greatest players of all time that are still kicking it. I, I don't want to expose nobody, but I know somebody that legitimately hates Carmelo Anthony. And we might be seeing some of the last good years of Carmelo Anthony's year of career. He was just out of the league for a whole year. We cannot, we cannot be hate watching players anymore. We can't. Um, and Stephen Curry, every single day I watch him, I'm, an, I'm amazed. And I still know there's a percentage of NBA fans that don't like Steph Curry, which is fine. I'm not saying you have to become a fan. But I want you to watch it while it's still going on because I don't want you to miss out on some of the greatest stuff that is happening in the league. That's all. Another thing, kind of unrelated, but kind of related. Um, I still don't want you to take things for granted, but even if it's not hate watching, like I kind of took, I definitely took prime Tim Duncan or Tim Duncan's run in the NBA for granted. Like I, I understood that he was the greatest power forward of all time, even though he played majority of his career at center. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't find myself tuning into a bunch of Spurs games when he was in his prime. And maybe that was due to the fact that they were a boring team. Um, and I wish I would have. I wish I would have experienced some of the greatest moments of Tim Duncan's career live. Now, luckily for us, we're living in 2021 going to 2022. So any footage of basketball you want to see, it, it exists on the internet. But there's nothing better than experiencing it live, right? Like I could watch 
every single game of the Heatles' career together right now, and I would still enjoy it, but there's nothing like not there's nothing like watching something live. What was this video? I, I don't really know. I saw this quote and it made me it made me think. It made me reminisce about some stuff, and hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, my older people that are watching this, if you fall into the same category as me as hate watching a player or a team, let me know who that was. I would assume that a lot of people my age were probably hate watching the Heat, unless you're a LeBron fan. And I think the, ge not generation, but the era after mine is going to be that Warriors team. What's the next big super team that might get hate watched? Ooh, that's very interesting.